over 4,000 sales sales receipts from the U.S. military. Uh, Channel 9 in Baton Rouge actually went and looked at some of our receipts and they actually posted one on their internet that uh, as early as 1995, Bell Chase New Orleans had started using us. So we, we've been around for a long time. Now Stephen, does the military use it to clean their ships and their bilges and all that kind of stuff now? Oh, absolutely. Uh, about a third of our sales end up going to a uh, locker in Norfolk or a locker in uh, the, uh, Los Angeles by the Stacy Depot. And what that means, it's going to a vessel, and they don't want anyone, anyone to know what they're loading on their vessels. So when it goes to a locker, it's going to some vessel that's going to be used on their deck or when they're, when they're anchored or moored, they have to put a boom around their ship and they have to keep the inside of the boom clean. Well, they use OSC2 to do that. What about the eductor system, Steve? Uh, yeah, most vessels have eductor systems or indu fire induction systems, and all they do is stick one hose down the water, stick one hose in a container of OSC2, they set the nozzle at 2%, percent, two percent, and that's how they spray it. That's basically 50 to 1. Go ahead. Um, the product uh, cultivates the microbes that are already, that are already in the Right. In other words, we mix, mix OSC2 with the water that's now, here. Now, whenever the product uh, coagulates the oil, it turns it into small pieces, so that it brings it to the surface. It doesn't coagulate it, it breaks it into pieces. And, and it will send it to the surface. Causes it to float, it changes it, it allows it, it actually, we, in 1996, the EPA, uh, they put up a lot of hurdles for us over in 20 years, but in 96, we were asked to, because we have a biosurfactant in the product, we were asked to do a swirling flask dispersant test. So we performed it. And what we found out is, is that we had a negative number. And what they pointed out is that OSC2 doesn't allow the oil to float. It actually causes hydraulic lift or causes the oil to float. Okay. Um, now, how will, that, how will it be affected by the, the, the ebb and flow of the tide, whereas when the oil is on the surface in these little pieces, although these microbes are being cultivated here, whenever the tide pulls these pieces out and the microbes out there are not being cultivated, is it still, how does that, how does that work? Well, there are constituents in OSC2 that cause molecular adhesion. When it breaks into little particles, it's also taking little particles of OSC2, and the enzymes form digestive binding sites, which is where microbes attach to the broken down hydrocarbons. Once they attach, they don't let go. They use it up until, it's, until the food source is digested to CO2 and water. And the enzymes just act as catalysts to speed this up. This product doesn't do one thing different Kevin, you than Mother Nature will do on her own, on her own it's, uh, in 40 or 50 years. It's, it's, what it's we do is we speed okay. it up on and, and okay. based hey. on the stuff, we've done a demonstration in Grand Isle on this dispersed right oil and it, it took uh, five days to completely remediate it to CO2 it. and water. I know Felix and Terry, they done. They took some marsh grass and did a closed container test and uh, it took in that closed container where you don't have as much oxygen, much water, much microbes, it took 13 days to remediate that that hydro, the hydrocarbons in there to CO2 and water, and it cleaned the marsh glass, grass completely. I actually made it green too. Kev, tell them about the fertilizer. Characters. Well, once you grow the indigenous bacteria, which anyone that's used fertilizer in their yard, you realize you're growing indigenous bacteria in your yard, and that feeds the the grass. And so that's really all you're doing out here is, is we'll be producing kind of an inert fertilizer that'll help the marsh grass actually grow. But the, the biggest thing this product does is we rapidly detoxify the oil so that it doesn't harm the environment in any way or any species. We've, uh, if you can go on our website and we did a test or we did a cleanup on a three and a half acre pond where Texaco had a pipeline break. It dumped 125 barrels of oil in this little, little pond wind pushed it to the north, we trapped it with a boom. We went around and sprayed the product, sprayed all the grass, it lifted right off, and you can see the pictorial of this. But 30 minutes after we had applied the product, we were walking around the back side, the south side of that pond, and we actually saw a snake climb out of that oil-coated water onto a limb, and the oil didn't stick to him. They had no fish kill, no turtles, and no birds. How many, uh, how many barrels does it take per acre of, of uh, affected area? It's, it's, see, that's you're, you're talking about dispersal application. What, you, what we have to do is determine what the depth is, and based on that depth and area, will tell us how much OSC2 to apply. What we're basically trying to get is, is, is we mix the product 50 to one, and that'll clean up 50 gallons of oil. 
if you're out using an induction system, you want to apply enough OSE2 to make the one-to-one -one ratio, and then that'll break it down. Oh. The other thing is, and, and you know, one thing that just really disheartens me when I see it, I've read reports now for the last two weeks, there are over 3,500 res, uh, responders that have come down sick and ill from, from the dispersants out there. You got kids getting blisters on them in, in, uh, on the beaches in Florida because they're getting in that water with all that propylene glycol and 2-butoxyethanol in it. In 1992, during the Megaboard Spiral out by Galveston, Texas, my product drank some of this product on Channel 11 News in Houston. He's a retired Rear Admiral. Your and he basically said, let our, com let our competitors do this. I mean, that's how safe it is. We wash our hands in it all the time. There's absolutely no problem with responders or, or anyone involved with this. So basically what you're looking at is you got a product that you can handle with your hands. You don't need a big suit on. Uh, you can put it on the water and it's gonna have an endpoint of CO2 in water compared to using a dispersant that sinks the oil, no substantiated endpoint, and it'll make everybody sick that's associated with it. I mean, it just seems like the trade-off is, you know, they talk about the trade-offs and that's why they use dispersant. Well, compared to our product, there is no trade-off. We're so much far, we're so far superior that, well, that's why dispersants are banned in a lot of countries and we're used. LA DEQ is in up up in arms right now. Uh, Sanford Phillips, he uh, he asked DEQ or he asked the EPA a week ago Friday for a t uh, to demonstrate OS the authorization to demonstrate OSE two on on the marsh grass, and they told him not only are they not going to allow our product to be demonstrated, they're not going to allow any bioremediation to be demonstrated. Upon hearing that, I was referred to a guy named Sheriff Mack in Arizona who fought the Brady gun bill. The reason this is kind of important is, is by fighting that bill, the Supreme Court wrote a ruling after that and it basically stated that, no, that the state is a sovereign entity. The EPA nor the federal government can push their regulations or policies on the state. And if the state wants to take care of its own territorial waters and its state, it has the absolute right to do that. And they cited some issues with EPA in that ruling. So DEQ has, had, has got their attorney general looking into it. And as soon as he gives them the word, they're going to go ahead. DEQ did yesterday go up to the national response team and ask them to use for permission to use OSC2 on the demonstration. But once the attorney general gives them uh, the go ahead, they're just going to do it. Didn't the Coast Guard recommend that they escalate it to the next level as well? Uh, Sunday, I got an email from New London, Connecticut, where Coast Guard's been reviewing OSC2, and they sent us a letter said that OSC2 has been forwarded to the Federal On-Scene Coordinator for action, which means, you know, go out and use it. We haven't, we haven't heard from the FOSC yet, but we're waiting. Steve, we have a couple of options. They have some... Uh, some um, stuff that looks like this on the marsh grass and everything like that over here he said we can have two two by ten sections okay this right here we have some we have some oil that's washing up right here is the tide on the way out or on the way in yeah, yeah. it's on the way in it's coming so we, can, to we can spray to about this point from the boom in or this way and get some of this stuff that's leading up right here or we can go over here or could we do both like a 10 foot section here yeah. a 10 foot section sure. there you want to do, do that both. you want to do okay now, I'm not going to worry with that because I want the tide to be able to wash everything out I'll tell you unless what, you get a surge. Y'all excuse me just one second before, before we get started. We've got, we got a lot of interest in this. Uh, a lot of people here would ask for a few ground rules. Let's uh, be careful. I don't want to stomp. We can do more damage. You know, this group of people can do more damage to the marsh grass stomping across than oil is going to do. So there's a little, there's kind of a defined path that goes over here. Uh, if anybody needs to go over there and take a look at it besides the applicator, let's kind of follow that path. Um, we, number one, we don't want to damage the integrity of the test site. We want to have a, a, a reasonable test site. Number two, we don't want to damage the marsh grass. So I uh, just ask everybody to kind of use some caution and how, how you access the area. Uh, we're waiting on some stakes. We want to try to get some stakes and kind of stake off a couple of areas that we'll use. One is a treatment plot and one is a, as okay. a control plot. So Great. We can look, and we can look at it, monitor it over a period of days or so weeks. We'll, we'll, That's perfect. You want to wait till after you stake it? 
Um, we, we on your time, whatever you need okay. to do. If, if you would prefer to wait. We can sample the oil, Kevin, if you want. While we're waiting. You want to uh, you want to get some of this stuff that's rolling up in the barrel? Yep. Why don't you do that? Steve, okay. walk along this path, but let me show you this area right here. See what By the way, you're, you're exactly right about this, and we've contracted, or, or we've, we're in contact with uh, some crop dusters and some airboat people so that we can go in and spray marshes and estuaries and not affect the marsh grass in any way. We've also got a 747 that can spray, mitigate 20,000 gallons of oil per spray. Um, Want me to cut this off or you leave it rolling? 